Carlo Gambino was an Italian-American mobster who became the boss of the Gambino crime family, one of the five families that controlled organized crime in New York City. He rose to power in the 1950s and 1960s and was known for his cunning and his ability to keep a low profile. After Vito Genovese's imprisonment, he subsequently took control of the commission, the governing body that oversaw organized crime in the United States. He was considered one of the most powerful crime bosses of his time and was known for his ability to maintain a low profile, serving only 22 months in prison for a tax evasion charge in 1937. He died of a heart attack in 1976 at the age of 74, having successfully built one of the largest and most powerful criminal organizations in the United States. Gambino was born on August 24, 1902, in Palermo, Sicily, Italy, to a family from the Paso di Regano Sicilian Mafia gang. Gambino arrived in the United States as a stowaway on December 23, 1921, in Norfolk, Virginia, and later joined his cousins, the Castellanos, in New York City, where he worked for a small trucking company owned by his uncle's family. Gambino relocated to Brooklyn and married one of his cousins, Catherine Castellano, the sister of Paul Castellano, in 1932. Gambino was a member of a criminal organization led by Joe Masseria, and he was arrested as a suspicious person in Lawrence, Massachusetts in 1930. Although that charge was dropped, he was arrested a month later in Brockton, Massachusetts, on a larceny charge. When he failed to appear in court, a warrant was issued for his arrest. About four years later, he was apprehended as a fugitive in Manhattan and returned to Brockton, where the larceny charge was dropped when he made restitution of $1,000. Salvatore Maranzano, who had come from Sicily to run the Castellamarese clan, was Masseria's main rival by the early 1930s. Their rivalry erupted into the bloody Castellamarese War. Masseria and Maranzano were dubbed Mustache Peets because they were older, traditional mafia bosses who began their criminal careers in Italy. They were committed to upholding the alleged old world mafia principles of honor, tradition, respect, and dignity. These bosses refused to work with non-Italians and were wary of non-Sicilians. Some of the most conservative bosses only worked with men from their own Sicilian village. Masseria's war had been going poorly, and Lucky Luciano saw an opportunity to change sides. Luciano agreed to engineer Masseria's death in exchange for receiving Masseria's rackets and becoming Maranzano's second-in-command in a secret deal with Maranzano. Masseria was murdered on April 15, 1931, in a Coney Island restaurant in Brooklyn. Luciano took over Masseria's gang and became Maranzano's lieutenant, effectively ending the Castellamarese War. Maranzano reorganized the Italian-American gangs in New York City into five families, led by Lucky Luciano, Joe Profacci, Tommy Gagliano, Vincent Mangano, and himself, after Masseria's death. Maranzano called a meeting of crime bosses in Wappingers Falls, New York, where he declared himself Capo di Tutti Capi, boss of all bosses. Maranzano also reduced the rackets of rival families in favor of his own. Luciano appeared to accept the changes, but was waiting for the right moment to remove Maranzano. Despite the fact that Maranzano was slightly more progressive than Masseria, Luciano had come to believe that Maranzano was even more greedy than Masseria. By September 1931, Maranzano realized Luciano was a threat and hired Vincent Mad Dog Call, an Irish gangster, to kill him. However, Tommy Lucchese alerted Luciano that he was marked for death. So when Maranzano ordered Luciano, Vito Genovese, and Frank Costello to come to his office, Luciano sent four Jewish gangsters, secured with the aid of Meyer Lansky and Bugsy Siegel, to kill Maranzano instead. Later in 1931, Luciano called a meeting in Chicago with various bosses, where he proposed a commission to serve as the governing body for organized crime, and was called Lucky Luciano's greatest innovation. 
Gambino and his cousins became soldiers in the family led by Vincent Mangano after Masuria died. He allegedly made a lot of money on the black market by selling ration stamps during World War II under the new rule. However, he was arrested in 1937 and sentenced to 22 months in prison at Lewisburg for tax evasion in connection with the operation of a million-gallon distillery in Philadelphia. In the meantime, Mangano despised Albert Anastasia, the Mangano family's underboss, for his close ties to Luciano and Costello. This, and other business disagreements, sparked heated, almost physical clashes between the two mobsters. On April 19, 1951, Mangano's brother Philip was discovered dead near Sheepshead Bay in Brooklyn. He and his brother were allegedly murdered on Anastasia's orders, who then assumed control of the Mangano crime family, with Gambino as his underboss. Vito Genovese instructed Vincent Giganti to kill Frank Costello on May 2, 1957, but Costello was only wounded. Despite the fact that the wound was superficial, it persuaded Costello to cede power to Genovese and retire. Later, Genovese and Gambino allegedly ordered Anastasia's murder after Costello was gone. Gambino allegedly gave the contract to Joe Profaci, who allegedly gave it to the Gallo crew, led by Joseph Crazy Joe Gallo. Anastasia was murdered on October 25, 1957, in the Park Sheraton Hotel's barbershop in Midtown Manhattan. Gambino then took over as the new boss of the Mangano crime family, which had been renamed the Gambino crime family. Gambino appointed Joseph Biondo as his underboss, but by 1965, he had been replaced by Aniello Della Croce. Genovese wanted to legitimize his new power by holding a national Corsa Nostra meeting in November 1957, immediately after the Anastasia murder and after taking control of the Luciano crime family from Costello. On November 14, 1957, powerful mafiosi from the United States and Italy gathered at Joseph Barber's estate in Appalachian, New York, for Genovese's meeting. The meeting, however, was interrupted by state police, and when the mobsters discovered the police presence, they fled. Many mafiosi fled through the woods surrounding the Barber estate, but Genovese's car came to a halt at a roadblock. He was, however, released. It is also believed that Gambino attended. Genovese was sentenced to 15 years in prison for drug offenses on April 17, 1959, and died there on February 14, 1969. Gambino and Luciano allegedly helped pay a Puerto Rican drug dealer $100,000 to falsely implicate Genovese in a drug deal. Luciano died of a heart attack on January 26, 1962, at Naples International Airport. Three days later, 300 people gathered in Naples for Luciano's funeral. His body was carried through the streets of Naples in a horse-drawn black hearse. Luciano's body was returned to New York for burial with the permission of the U.S. government. Gambino took control of the commission after Genovese was imprisoned. He despised drugs, and despite the fact that heroin and cocaine were highly profitable, he believed they would draw attention. By his orders, the punishment for a family member dealing drugs was death. The Gambino family had 500 soldiers and over 1,000 associates in the 1960s. Thomas Gambino, Carlo Gambino's oldest son, married Tommy Lucchese's daughter, Frances, in 1962. Carlo Gambino presented Lucchese with a $30,000 gift at the wedding, which was attended by over 1,000 guests. In exchange, Lucchese gave Gambino a piece of one of his rackets at Idlewild Airport, now called John F. Kennedy Airport. Lucchese had authority over airport management, security, and all airport unions. As a team, Lucchese and Gambino now controlled the airport, the commission, and most organized crime in New York City.